All right, have you ever went to your doctor, your physician, talked to your parents, talked to your friends, told your boss, maybe even your, your pastor or your counselor, told them your problems, what you're dealing with, the conditions you're, you're, you're having, and you came away feeling that they think your condition, your symptoms, your health complaints, are all in your head. In fact, they may even say those words. I think it's just in your head. I think you're, I think you're making this stuff up. I mean, how, how deflating is that? <clears throat> you know, you're already completely worn down with how your body is manifesting, how it's responding to life. And now the very people, the very humans, whose role in your life is to support you and help you figure out, you know, how to live your best life, support you in that, get you through, you know, vexing issues, say or suggest that you're just making all this up. That, you know, the intense digestive pain, that weird tingling sensation you have in your chest and your arms or that comes and goes in your legs, that, that sharp stabbing pain that, that you have in your lower back or your abdomen or your leg that comes out of nowhere and then seemingly goes away for no apparent reason two hours later, it's all in your head. You know, th those rushes of heat and then cold, it's all in your head. This is devastating, is it not? I mean, this is, it's, it's a terrible feeling, it's a terrible situation to be in. And I, no doubt I've seen so many patients in this situation and I think what, uh, what we have here is not a lack of empathy, um, but potentially a lack of understanding of how the physical part of our body, you know, the, the part that we can see with our eyes that we could measure, say on a, a lab report after a blood draw or a urine test or a stool test, uh, the, um, the part that we can perform, perform x-rays on or MRIs or CT scans on to see what is happening underneath the skin, but is still physical. I think we have issue with that part of us, that physical part, and its interactions with our sensory or automatic part of our body. And I think that comes from the fact that in Western medicine, we are so one-tracked. You know, we, have, we, we are a, a one trick pony uh, when it comes to Western medicine. You've probably heard this before, but the, uh, the pill for the ill, you know, that is the system of medicine that we find ourselves overwhelmed with currently. And, you know, we, we study a chemical or pharmacists study a chemical, researchers study a chemical for a symptom, and then a drug company patents that chemical um, within a medication, and then the doctor prescribes that chemical or that patent drug for the patient to take to get the migraine to go away, regardless of why the migraine occurred in the first place, right? This is how we roll, and we've been rolling like this for a long time now, um, and you know, doctors are individual systems. You know, and, it's, and they, they see the body as, as this, this single little set apart systems as opposed to an intricate system that all works together. I and mean, that is how they're taught in medical school these days. And we have, you know, GI specialists who send you to a, a cardiovascular specialist who then sends you to a neurologist who then sends you to a psychiatrist. And each stop along the way, these, these physicians have prescribed, you know, a medication to help with the system, well, I mean, not with the system, but the symptom in their category of specialty, regardless of what the GI doc, the cardiovascular doc, the neuro doc did, they're just whatever's in their, in their system of knowledge related to the cardiovascular system, then you get a beta blocker. And then you get from the neurologist, you get gabapentin. And from the GI doc, you get rifaximin. <laughs> and of course, you know, the generalist, who is um, trying to gain an understanding of the whole body and see the whole body as one living, interacting unit, they are considered inadequate. Um, and their viewpoint is uh, less than valued. And this, this whole segregating 
of the human being, you know, has made it challenging for people, both the person experiencing the symptoms and especially chronic ailments and the people involved with their life or their care. Uh, because, you know, these, these people, they don't fit into a nice diagnosable insurance ICD-10 code uh, model so that, um, you know, it's, it's easy diagnosis, easy treatment. You know, they, they have a, a real issue and it's not a very objective one related to how medicine has been taught and perceived for the last, say, 100 years. So I see patients after I see patient after patient all the time who has uh, you know they have a real physical ailment, and they've been bypassed by family members, by friends, by physicians, by counselors. You know, it's just being crazy. You're just depressed. Uh, you're over emotional. It's all in your head, right? When the reality is, they have a physical symptom, a legitimate physical symptom, say sharp pains in the legs and arms that are that are caused by a combination of maybe chronic hyperimmune response and this special other thing called the limbic system or, or limbic system trauma. So this is what we're gonna talk about now. The limbic system, this this area um, you know could be damaged or traumatized by anything from a car accident to a coach yelling at, at the person in front of their peers, to, to rape, or to a, a, a life of just processed food eating, or maybe a, a chronic viral infection or Lyme disease, mold toxicity. There's so many potential things that can irritate the limbic system because our limbic system is the part of our brain or nervous system that is involved with our behavior, and our emotional response to life. It's big, that's a big deal, right? Our behavior and our emotional response to life. It is so closely connected with our autonomic, our autonomic nervous system, which is, a, you know, there's that fight or flight part and that, that rest relaxation part there. And then our endocrine system, which is, you know, the kind of the hormone system of our body, our thyroid, our ovaries, our pituitary gland, um, testes in men, hypothalamus, adrenals, the limbic system, you know, it literally is in charge of metabolizing all the sensory inputs that, that we come in contact with. You know, this, this is everything, literally, from what we see, what we perceive we see, what we hear, what we perceive we hear, what we touch, what we perceive we touch, what we smell, all these senses. It has to literally decide, is the room we just walked into, the person we're about to talk to or are talking to, you know, the bright lights, the sounds in the room next door that we hear, the, the feel of the chair we're sitting in, are these things safe? Is this okay? Do we like this? Should we run? Should we smile? Should we just start profusely sweating? Should we shake? Should we relax? The limbic system is doing all of this nonstop. When you're awake, when you're sleeping, and everywhere in between. So when a person goes through a traumatic event and the, the limbic system, which we've been talking about, has trouble processing or filing, filing away the events um, in, in an optimal matter and in, in, in an orderly matter, uh, and it kind of a, a start and a stop to these events, we can end up in a state of limbic instability or, or limbic dysfunction. And Unfortunately, <clears throat> this can manifest as kind of our autonomic and sensory responses going awry and performing things for no apparent reason. So now you have a, a person, maybe even yourself, who is feeling fine one moment, then goes to uh, you know a fun event where they meet a bunch of new people, but at the end of the event, they're beyond exhausted and for the next week, they're stuck on their couch or their bed. They can't do anything. Or the person goes to the grocery store, and as soon as they walk in the grocery store, they get extreme brain fog, uh, and they have to leave. Or say their pet dies, and now they have shooting pains throughout their whole body. Um, and they, or maybe they get diagnosed with SIBO, um, and they have overwhelming nausea. Or each time, say, your, your husband leaves for work, you start getting this squeezing sensation in your chest. 
for no reason at all. Or uh, there's plenty of examples here. They, you feel great on the weekend, but you on Monday at like 3 p.m., you're completely exhausted. Whereas on Saturday and Sunday, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you feel fantastic. Uh, or say you open up your computer screen uh, to go to work. You're you know, a stay-at-home worker now. And as soon as you open up your computer screen, you get like an instant migraine and like start feeling dizzy. But you could turn around and watch TV and have no problem whatsoever. How about everything you put in your body, everything you eat seems to upset your stomach now. You used to be able to eat anything and now everything seems to upset your stomach. And sometimes you'll eat a sweet potato and you feel horrible. And the next time you eat a sweet potato and you'll feel completely fine. What is this? Literally these and hundreds more I've personally witnessed uh, with patients over the years where their limbic system, their sensory system, all those senses we have are in a state of dysfunction, disarray, imbalance, inability to figure out what to do with what's happening with our being and, and, and the position our being is in life. And the problem I've run into, like I talked about at the very beginning, is because so many people have been told that it's all in their head. They've been by family members, by friends, by coworkers, by doctors, counselors, you know, these symptoms are just in their head. Get over it. And I want to explain to them and inspire them and help them to understand that the limbic system is where these symptoms are coming from. But it's challenging when all they've ever heard is it's in my head. And so they think I'm telling them it's in their head. When of course I'm not telling them it's in their head. I'm saying it's in their limbic system, but you know, the limbic system, you can't really test. There's not a blood test. There's not a urine test. There's not a stool test. There's not imaging that can look at the limbic system. Um, however, uh, I'm going to put up an image up here of this, uh, uh, these bodies and the, the study that was done in 2014, looking at, um, basically different emotions and how different emotions affect human beings. And you'll see that uh, with with these different heats, you know, when a person is sad, how, how they look. When a person is happy, how they look. When a person is feeling loved, how they look. And the different heat patterns in the body simply based off the different emotions a person's experiencing. So as you can see, depending on the emotion you're experiencing, different things, different systems, different parts of your body are heated up, are cooler, have, how are having more activity, more blood flow, more stimulation, which I hope could help a lot of us see that it's not just in our head, but it's in a part of our being that we can't test for necessarily, but is legitimately happening. It, it, is, it is legitimately a part of our you know, healing story. And if instead of uh, thinking, okay, um, I'm going to use a pill to help myself out here. If, if we said, you know what, maybe there's another type of therapy I could use to help out this part of my, my, my system, my limbic system, because guess what? There is, I don't know of any pill that will help your limbic system out. That's what, I mean, you can, you can suppress all your emotions. You can suppress, you know, your autonomic nervous system and all that, but that's not killing you. You know, you're not, you're not going to feel your, your best by any means. So what if we used scientifically backed medicinal therapies to retrain our limbic system and say, you know what? It's not in my head. It's in my limbic system. And I'm going to retrain my limbic system so that, and support my limbic system so that it can manifest in life how I want it to manifest so that I can feel and do and live my best life. All right. So there's a couple things you could do you really want to check these out. I got a whole list of them, but uh, there's something called dynamic neural retraining systems. There's another one called the, the Gupta program. Um, there's physical exercise, which is magnificent for the, for the nervous system. There's food uh, titrating. There's neurofeedback. There's biofeedback. There's you know different types of meditation um, and cognitive behavioral therapies. There's something called incremental training, where you basically kind of slowly but surely add in new things. Um, in a very safe manner to uh, allow the body to uh, recognize um, and uh, create tolerance for it. 
kind of like uh, when you when you do allergy allergy therapy, creating to tolerance in the immune system. Same thing you can do for the limbic system. There's of course there's there's grounding. There there's you know getting outdoors. There's adaptogenic herbs that can also support the limbic system. There are literally so many ways of approaching, supporting, and recalibrating the limbic system, so that uh, you know you can have total life success again. Most all of these can literally be done right where you are. You can do them in your house because most people with, with limbic system issues, like the last thing they want to do is do something new, <laughs> go, go to a new place, meet new people, um, hear more sounds, ride in a car, all this kind of stuff. So you literally could do it in the comfort of your own home. And this is the deal. If you're suffering from symptoms that do not fit into a box that is nice and square and your health practitioner hasn't been able to give you an answer and help you or your counselor or pastor or your friends or whatever, then you want to, I can't express enough, you want to look at these kind of therapies because you are doing yourself a massive disservice by not looking at the potential of you supporting your limbic system and that enabling you to get out of this entire crazy picture of your heart going wild, um, pains in your neck for no reason, you know, you've done every therapy known to man to numb different pains and they just keep on coming back, keep on coming back. You, you've got to look at limbic system retraining. So I would love to hear if you've already done some retraining of your limbic system, if you've overcome in some of these areas, you know, what has worked for you, how long it took it to work for you, and um, even like what, what system you use, that'd be awesome. Because uh, you know, I have a few that I use with a lot of patients, but uh, um, it's always fantastic to hear what has worked for other people because that can build confidence that you know if it worked for this one person, it potentially could work for this next person or for you. So I'm Dr. Matt. I know it's not in your head, but it could be in your limbic system. And uh, please like, share, uh, subscribe for sure so that uh, you know, we can get this information out to as many people as possible who've been told it's all in their head.